Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobe, and welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm down in Chatham, Ontario, catching up with agris agronomist Dale Cowan. Dale, how's it going? It's going quite well, Bernard, and you? I'm not too bad. Excellent. I mean, b- b- nice field of corn. It and, is a great uh, field of corn. And it's great to be back here again with you. Um, you know, every year I like to catch up with you, talk innovation. Last year, we were talking about biologicals, a yeah. product like, you know, Invita, something right. that we use to s- s- sort of like fix nitrogen in corn and uh, a lot of buzz about that in the winter. Today I'm back I want to talk about biostimulants. Right. So maybe, maybe the first question is hey, what's the difference between a biological and a biostimulant? Well uh, biostimulant is kind of that overarching uh, umbrella definition so biologicals I would say are part of the biostimulant package mm-hmm. as are a number of other compounds. Yep. So. so where does um, a biostimulant fit um, Dale? When, 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 uh, as a grower when you're looking at it what are you hoping to achieve when you use it on your farm? Well, a biostimulant is designed to alleviate a, an abiotic stress. So, um, you know, it could be uh, you're in a field where you've got uh, compaction and, and root problems, and you're trying to stimulate the crop to get out of that uh, that uh, stall of, of crop growth. So, some of the biostims are really designed to alleviate those abiotic stresses. Uh, you know, whether it's too wet, too hot, too cold, too dry, mm-hmm. there's some products that will help get the plant through to that next step. So Dale, a lot of biostimulants out there, they've been around a while, and a lot of companies looking at them, a lot of researchers like you looking at them, where would they fit on a farm for a grower now, in a corn crop for example? Well, I wouldn't call myself a researcher, Bernard, but, <laughs> but certainly we are very keenly interested in these products because we want to deliver value to our customers. So uh, a lot of products on the market, as you said, a lot of interest, a lot of money being spent by large mainline companies, buying up companies, doing major research on modes of action and how they work. So we're really seeing a big interest in the biostimulants. And so where a farmer might want to use them is, is to alleviate abiotic stress. So a perfect example would be one of the products we use when we spray a group 27 herbicide. You know, it's called a bleacher for, right. for a reason. And, and anytime a plant has to divert energy away from growth to repair or defend itself from damage, that uh, energy is not there for yield. So we have some products that shorten that, that recovery period to get the plant metabolizing back mm-hmm. to normal. So some of the products like crop boosters, for example, we put in with a spray tank, that gets the plant going again faster and alleviates that, that stress from the chemical. Right. Now you talk about yield potential and you know the, poten- the, re- the reality of realizing yield and that gap. Yeah. The whole idea here, Dale, is to really close that gap, right? Well, exactly. So I, I'm a great proponent of looking at yield potential, which is defined as using an adapted variety or hybrid in a stress free environment with non-limiting resources what is that maximum potential yield and then comparing that to what do you actually get in your field Mm -hmm. and that gap of course is what really is intriguing that's where technology comes from that's where innovation comes from is closing that gap and so when you look at uh, that gap about 70 percent of that yield gap is attributed to abiotic stresses too wet, too hot, too cold, too dry all those things soil compaction, imbalance, fertility there's lots of things that go into that but some of these uh, biosims we're looking at is, can they alleviate some of the stresses that once we have everything else going, we have a temporary weather stress, is there something we can apply to a crop that gets it through that little temporary stall and onto the next growth phase? So that's kind of what we're investigating here. Talk about some of the products you're looking at and what do you need to see in the field here? In, in, in your, my field, you know, research here, you know, typically a lot of the stuff is done in the research uh, sort of milieu where a lot of the factors are taken away. Yep. You're putting it here in the field. Yeah, so when you look at small plot research, it's designed to look at just efficacy of the product. So you remove all the variables you can, and you're just looking at response. So small plot response, so you'll hear in the literature, this product increased yields by 15% on average. So now we take it out to larger scale fields. Now all those variables that you eliminated in research are now in play in a field. Mm -hmm. So now is it 5%, zero, 25%? Where in the field is it responding? Are we maximizing the maximums or maximizing the minimum areas in the field? So so when we get out in the fields, we start to learn more about how the product behaves in the real world. And then you can position it on farms with growers, with your clients. Yeah, and everybody's interested in return on investment. So these things aren't free, but they're not overly expensive either. But still, you want a return on the investment. So is it worth a bushel, two bushels, three bushels? And under what conditions do we apply? When do we apply? What growth stage and how often? Final question for you. Um, what type of products might we see in the next year or two emerging in, in this category? 
Well, we're seeing uh, a lot of products come uh, that were traditional micronutrient packages. Now they're starting to add uh, certain uh, fatty acids and phenols that help the plant metabolize through stress better. Uh, certainly looking at, everyone's adding carbon. So when you talk about soil health, invariably you have to talk about carbon. So a lot of these products have soluble carbon, which does uh, amazing things to the biome and the plant. So it stimulates uh, nutrient uptake and, and growth and, and uh, influences the rhizosphere and things like that. And it does a different nutrient uh, uh, profile at the root so there's lots of lots of things that it can do and but the main part is we're going to see things that uh, come with more soluble carbon uh, more of the fatty acids some amino acids we're going to see things that come with uh, potassium acetate right and uh, some of the other compounds uh, some of the enzymes that help solubilize minerals out of soil uh, so with just a whole host of products either fully applied or on the seed or, or applied to fertilizer and broadcast on the field. There's lots of different ways to apply these products. Well, Dale, some great insights. Great to have you on the Corn School. Thanks for a look at biostimulants. We'll uh, see you a little later in the summer. Always something to look at. You said. <laughs>